listen to me Nishikize. my people Watu wangu, is a separate church ni lilo but if you see verse 2 of Daniel 12 wa Danueli mbili, verse 3 also wa tatu pia, Daniel sees the rapture of the church wakanisha, after the earthquakes ya ardhi, after the economic crisis ya shida ki utata ki uchumi, then Daniel sees the rapture kisha Danieli anaona unyakuzi. multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth Earth, will awake some to everlasting life and others to shame and everlasting contempt but those who are wise they will shine like the brightness of heaven but those who lead many to righteousness they will shine like the stars Forever and ever. Milele na hata milele. Listen to the message. The Lord is saying yuasema, that there will be a rewarding ceremony ya kwa na ya for that church that will enter. Kwa hilo and that's why the Bible says na ndiyo yasema, you must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Lazima mbele ya kiti cha hukumu cha Christo. The white throne of the Lord Kiti cha enzi cha upe cha bwana. Even the raptured church. Hata kanisa lililo nyakuliwa. What he says. Anasema lakini. Those who are wise. Wale walio nye hekima. What is the meaning of wise? Maana ya hekima ni nini? Which means he will glorify their corpus. He will glorify their bodies. Kumanisha. Hata itukuza miili yao. To be as bright as heaven. Iwe kama muangaza wa anga. Job 28. 25 to 28 when he established the force of the wind and he measured out the waters when he made a decree for the rain and a path for the thunderstorm then he looked at wisdom he looked at wisdom again then he looked at wisdom and he appraised it and he confirmed it and he tested it and he said unto man for the fear of the Lord that is wisdom and to shun evil that is understanding now you understand why the Lord celebrates wisdom when the wedding of the Lamb of God draws near which means God is asking you in your Christianity have you lived a life of the fear of the Lord and you know the answer is obviously no because if you fear the Lord you will try everything up and down to walk in holiness because you will understand that the only benchmark the only standard about God that is eternal from eternity to eternity the only benchmark that matters to the Lord is holiness listen to me that means he's asking that you may turn away from evil. Jesus made a deliberate effort Yesu za to go to the cross. Ya if you follow the discourse Ukif that took place in the garden of Gethsemane, wa la Gethsemane then you see that there was a very tough moment 
basi unaona ya kwamba kulikuwa na wakati mgumu sana they was pulling and pulling and pulling and being pulled kulikuwa na kuvuta na kuvuta na kuvuta na kuvutwa they was pulling kulikuwa na kuvuta there was a struggle kulikuwa na kungangana but he had lakini alisikia he had to make a deliberate effort ilibidi afanye jitihada ya kimaksudi we need to make a deliberate effort tunahitaji kufanya jitihada za kimaksudi he made a deliberate effort yeye alifanya jitihada ya kimaksudi to go to the cross kwenda msalabani we need to make a deliberate effort pia nasi tunahitaji kufanya jitihada to choose the righteousness of god ya kuchagua haki ya bwana Listen to me precious people. Nisikilize watu wa dhamani. Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Verses 19. Mustari wa 19. What I am giving you today. Kile ambacho ninawapatia hivi leo. You cannot get on any Christian television. Hauwezi kukipata katika runinga yoyote ya Kikristo. That's why the Lord has not even allowed me to be on those television. Ndio sababu hata Bwana hajaniruhusu niwe katika hizo runinga. Why? Kwa nini? Listen to this. Sikiza haya. They came to Jesus. Wakamjia Yesu. The disciples. Wanafunzi. They were very angry. Walikuwa wamekasirika sana. They were very broken hearted. Walikuwa wamevunjwa mioyo. And they came to him. Na wakamjia. In so much anxiousness. Katika hali ya wasiwasi mwingi. Anguish. Katika dhiki mingi. Distress. Katika dhiki mingi. And they told him. Na wakamwambia. They were taking their their robes, their, their the cloth they were tying on their shoulders walikuwa akichukua ile vazi aliyokuwa akifunga kwenye mabega yao they were unwinding walikuwa wakiifungua and throwing down na kuitupa chini and say lord wakisema bwana this gospel you are teaching hii injili ambayo unafundisha is a difficult gospel ni injili ngumu sana why do you speak in parables ni kwa nini unanena kwa mafumbo to them wow they are not understanding you hawakuelewi wewe and yet to us na ili hali kwetu sisi you speak in plain language unanena wazi wazi why kwa nini we want to give up tunataka tukate tamaa this is a difficult gospel But when Jesus answered them Lakini wakati Yesu alipowajibu They were more broken hearted Walivunjwa moyo zaidi He told them Aliwaambia It is meant to be hidden Inatakikana iwe fichike That only those that seek Lakini wale tu ambao wanaotafuta To them it will be revealed Kwao itafunuliwa That's why the Bible says Ndio sababu Biblia yasema In Jeremiah 29 Katika Yeremia 29 He says Asema One I think is Bastatin or something. Nadhani mstari wa 13 hapo. And he says, Asema, and you will seek me. Na mtanitafuta. But when you seek me, lakini mtakaponitafuta. And seek me. Na kunitafuta. With all your heart. Kwa mioyo yenu yote. I shall be found by you. Mnitapatikana nanyi. That's why I'm saying ndio sababu nasema mark this day in your life weka alama siku hii maishani mwako that the lord has loved your christianity ya kwamba bwana ameupenda ukristo wenu 26 isaiah chapter 26 mlango wa 26 kitabu ni cha isaiah verse 19 mstari wa 19 But you are dead will live. Lakini wafu wako wataishi. Their bodies will rise. Maiti zao zitafufuka. You who dwell in the dust. Ninyi muakaao katika mavumbi. Wake up and shout for joy. Amkeni kaimbeni kwa furaha. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. Kwa maana umande wako ni kama umande wa asubuhi. The earth will give birth to her dead. Nayo ardhi itawatoa waliokufa kwayo. Verse 20. Mstari wa 20. Go my people enda watu wangu if i were you i would underline my people kama ningekuwa wewe ningepigilia mstari hilo neno watu wangu go my people enda watu wangu enda your room ingia ni wewe ndani ya vyumba vyako you remember john chapter 14 unakumbuka yohana mlango wa 14 verse 1 to verse 3 mstari wa kwanza hadi wa tatu i go to the father ninaenda kwa baba to prepare a room for you kuandalieni chumba in the five to the father na kama ninaenda kwa baba in my father's house katika nyumba ya babangu there are many rooms kuna vyumba vingi and if i go to prepare room for you na kama naenda kuandalia 
That means I will come back and take you that you too may be where I am. That is the rapture of the church. And you see Isaiah also saw it. He said, go my people and enter your room and shut the door behind you and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourself for a little while until his wrath has passed by. See the Lord is coming. He's coming from out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins. The earth will disclose the bloodshed on her and will never conceal her slain. In a summary, this is what the Lord is saying about the rapture of the church, about the wedding of the Lamb. He is saying that when the wedding of the Lamb of God is about to happen, there will be a morning dew. The morning begins one at, at midnight sharp. And then any second on this side is the morning already. And so he said that there will be a morning dew that will be very critical in doing what? In bringing joy unspeakable into the church. Why joy? Because when the authority of the blood of Jesus will be restored by the latter anointing, the morning dew into the church then you will have something to smile about the church then you can walk into any restaurant and jump on the table and tell them hey, hey how about Jesus of Nazareth who knows him and somebody who was eating there will jump on his table and say hey I know him the authority of the blood the Holy Spirit in the latter anointing the Holy Spirit in the end time outpour is meant to centralize the blood of Jesus into the church that when the pastor begins to preach he will say the blood of Jesus when he preaches and preaches he will say the blood of Jesus it will be about the blood the blood the blood the blood the blood the blood the power the blood of Jesus is power unto the gospel the church today has thrown the blood of Jesus that's why there is confusion the false prophets are coming they loot they say I want only 10 people here and uh, each of you has one good seed only 10 I don't want more and he says that seed is 100,000 shillings if you don't have you can pledge and they say I don't want 11 I want 10 and you see women running with checkbooks
Because the blood of Jesus has been thrown out. The Father has sent me here. Baba amenituma hapa. Even unto many nations. Hata kwa mataifa mengi. To reestablish. Kuimarisha tena. The power of the blood of Jesus. Kuvu katika damu ya Yesu. In the church. Katika kanisa. Listen to me. Nishikize. He says Asema, when the morning dew comes there will be joy and he says na anasema, you will sleep in the dust of the earth wake up and shout for joy and he says na anasema, your dew is like the dew of the morning but when you move on then he talks about the room that Jesus went to prepare for us and he says run and enter there you remember yesterday I summarized about the prophecy of the four apocalyptic horsemen and I said I am now prophesying the coming of the pale horse and we read from Revelation chapter 6 verse 7 and 8 and we saw that when the pale horse came the rider is given power to kill one quarter of the earth. That is the Holocaust. If just 300,000 robbing dead bodies in Haiti that I went to prophesy in November and it happened January 12 if that alone Kama hiyo peke ya is so horrific sana. that nobody wants to be in Haiti ya haiti. then how much more horrendous Basi zaidi kiasi gani. when one quarter of the earth Wakati robo moja ya dunia nzima. has to be slain Inabidi iwawe. has to be killed iwawe. God is so loving ya mungu ni sana. he gives everybody the same chance kila mtu hiyo hiyo. to repent ya Kutubu. like during the time of Noah Kama wakati ule wanuho. and then Alafu. for those who will accept Kwa wale ukubali. to repent Kutubu. and not return to sin Na kutarudi kwenye dhambi. they will become the elect of God wate ule the children of God Wana wa mungu. then you will call them my people Kisha atawaita watu wangu. and when the rapture comes he will take them into the safety of heaven as he strikes the earth for sin and then he says then he says that any blood that was ever shed on the earth must now be revealed. It will be exposed. Anyone that was ever killed, slain, must now be revealed. What is the meaning there? That the latter anointing of the Lord is meant for repentance. Which means it is meant to expose sin that now it may call for repentance and that's why I said that the end time revival is a repentance revival the end time revival is a holiness revival the end time revival is a righteousness revival the end time revival is a holiness Holy Ghost Revival. The Holy Ghost will expose the sin. Read Revelation chapter 2015. 
Revelation 21, 27. Read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Soma wa Thessalonike wa pili mlango wa pili mstari wa pili hadi wa saba. I want to handle the last conversation. Ninataka nionge kuhusu mazungumzo ya mwisho. I want Russia also to hear this. Ningependa Urusi nao pia wasikie haya. Many many nations lined up. Mataifa mengi mengi sana yakiwa yameorodheshwa. Every nation Kila taifa, even China hata uchina, they need this opportunity you are having without intimidation na because many times a meeting like this Maana, kama huu, the devil intimidates you see some baskets being passed around Unaona, fulani, pitishwa, pitishwa. this day is gunia I'm told right they pass some baskets around that is intimidation because a woman will come and she's hungry for the true word and then in the middle of it all she's being told that unless you sow a seed you cannot be blessed whether the word was good she is broken hearted she will ask what was the intention was it to give the word or to harvest money that's why when it is this important you must separate it from money money out so we can squarely address the issues of the kingdom hallelujah Hallelujah. and that does not mean that you will not have your fare in your pocket when you go out that does not mean you will starve tonight many meetings when you go even your fair you live there this is different I want you to enter the kingdom of God listen to me nobody can sell the entry into the kingdom and then on the 11th of May the last night we were leaving to come back this is mighty watch this in the night at 2.50 a.m Usiku yapata saa na dakika hamsini za asubuhi. I immediately found myself in a vision of the Lord. Pale pale nikajipata katika maono ya Bwana. And then there was so much bright light coming from heaven. Alafu kulikuwa na mwangaza mkali mwingi sana ukitokea juu mbinguni. That was lighting that path. Na ulikuwa ukiangaza njia. And I was walking on the path. Nami nalikuwa nikitembea kwenye hiyo njia. And then all of a sudden, alafu ghafla binfu, the voice spoke. Sauti ikanena. And said, ikasema, look and see. Tazama ukaone. What has fallen at your feet? Ni nini kimeanguka miguuni pako? Walking. Kutembea. And when the voice came, na wakati sauti ilipokuja, shocked instead of looking at the feet because of the shock of the voice I turned and looked up where the voice came from and then I saw too much glory shine from there too much glory shining from there but I saw a piece of paper I saw a piece of paper that was falling from heaven like a kite in the wind like this like this let me just try and see like a kite 
you see that you see that umeona hiyo and it came na ikaja and fell right on my right foot ikaanguka moja kwa moja kwa mguu wangu wa upande wa kulia in that vision katika hayo maono and i picked it alafu nikaikiokota when i picked that piece of knot in the vision wakati nilichukua hicho kijikaratasi katika hayo maono i looked at it nilitazama and found out that actually it was a written note and then i found out it's a written note the more i looked at the note the more i realized zaidi nilivyozidi kutambua it was actually handwritten ilikuwa imeandikwa kwa mkono It was handwritten. Ilikuwa imeandikwa kwa hati ya mkono. Three times like this. Mara tatu kwa mpangilio huo. In descending order. Katika hali ya mfululizo wa kufuatana kwenda chini. Like this. Kwa mpangilio huo. And the more I looked at it to scrutinize it. Na jinsi nilivyozidi kuitazama kuichunguza zaidi. Then I found out kisha nikagundua that it was written using a blue pen, a fountain pen blue. Ya kwamba ilikuwa imeandikwa kwa kutumia kalamu ya wino aina ya samawati. And the more I looked again na jinsi nilivyozidi kutazama tena and began to read. Na nikaanza kusoma. Then I found that the first one on top is written nikapata ya kwamba mstari wa kwanza juu kabisa umeandikwa it said ilisema i am coming ninakuja the first one wa kwanza and then i went down to the middle one alafu nikaenda kwa ule wa katikati and he said na ulisema i am coming ninakuja and when i went to the third one na wakati nilienda ule wa tatu It said Ilisema I am coming Ninakuja says the Lord Asema Bwana And then I jumped up Alafu nikaruka juu and looked at my watch on the table Na nikaangalia saa yangu mezani and I realized it was 2:50 a.m. Na nikagundua ilikuwa ni saa 8 na dakika 50 za asubuhi. And as usual, na kama kawaida, run to the Bible. Nikakimbia kwa Biblia. To find it. Kuipata. But this is obvious. Lakini hii ni wazi. I don't have to find this one here. Sihitaji kuipata hii hapa. The message is clear. Ujumbe huu wazi. Thus says the Lord. Asema Bwana hivi. I am coming. Ninakuja. I am coming. Ninakuja. I am coming. Ninakuja. Says the Lord. Asema Bwana. The Lord is coming. Bwana yuwaja. It can never get simpler. Haiwezi kukuwa rahisi zaidi ya hapo. If anybody in this hall, iwapo mtu yeyote katika ukumbi huu, will miss the rapture of the church. Ataukosa unyakuzi wa kanisa. Then that is your fault. Basi hiyo ni makosa yako binafsi. Surely I have done everything the Lord has loved you. Hakika nimefanya kila kitu ambacho Bwana mapendeni kwacho. I've done my utmost best. Nimefanya vyema bora yangu yote zaidi. Free of charge. Pure kabisa. The way the Lord would have wanted. Jinsi Bwana alivyoitaka. The Lord is saying. Bwana yuasema. That he is coming for the church. Ya kwamba analikujia kanisa. And that means. Na hiyo inamaanisha. You have to prepare the way. Inabidi uandae njia. In the book of Revelation. Katika kitabu cha ufunuo wa Yohana. Chapter 3. Mlango wa 3. I think it's verse 10 or 11. Let's see. Nadhani mstari wa 10 hadi wa 11. I know that Revelation 22. Najua ufunuo wa Yohana 22. Verse 7. Mstari wa 7. Verse 12. Mstari wa 12. And verse 20. Na mstari wa 20. He says three times. Inasema mara tatu. I am coming. Ninakuja. But also in chapter 3. Lakini pia katika mlango wa 3. Let's see whether it's verse 10 or verse 11. Hebu tuone kama ni mstari wa 10 au wa 11. He says I am coming soon. Anasema naja upesi. Hold on to what you have. Shika sana ulichonacho. So that no one will take your crown. Ili asije mtu akaitwa taji yako. Him who overcomes. Yeye ashindaye. I'll make a pillar. Nitamfanya kuwa nguzo. In the temple of my God. Katika hekalu la Mungu wangu. You remember in the book of 1 Peter. Utakumbuka katika 
kitabu cha Petro wa kwanza. He says Asema He is the living stone. Yeye ndiye jiwa lililo hai. Rejected by all men. Lililo kataliwa na watu wote. But you too are being built into living stones. Lakini ninyi pia mnajengwa kuwa mawe yaliyo hai. That you may be the building block. Ya kwamba muwe mawe ya ujenzi. Of the house of the Lord. Ya nyumba ya Bwana. And here he says. Na hapa asema. If you will hearken unto what you have received. Kama utashika kila ulichopokea. Without losing it. Bila kukipoteza. He will make you one of the pillars. Atakufanya in the house of Jehovah katika nyumba ya Yehova in other words the lord is asking kwa maneno mengine Yehova anauliza how that i have said i am coming na sasa kwa sababu nimesema ninakuja church of christ kanisa la kristo have you really held on to the pillars of the word je kwa hakika kabisa mmeshikilia nguzo ya neno house of god nyumba ya bwana church of christ kanisa la kristo now that i have announced i am coming na sasa kwa sababu nime Have you held on to what you received in the beginning? Je, mmeshikilia kile mlichopokea pale mwanzoni? What did you receive in the beginning? Je, mlipokea nini pale mwanzoni? You received the blood of Jesus. Mlipokea damu ya Yesu. You received the gospel of the cross. Mlipokea injili ya msalaba. You never received Amuk- the gospel of prosperity. Hamkuwahi kupokea injili ya ufanisi. Only the gospel of the blood. Ni injili ya damu peke yake. And the cross. Na msalaba. Hold on to that. Shikilia kwa hiyo. Hold on to that. Shikilia hiyo. Hang on to that one. Shikilia kwa hiyo. 